Got a couple repairs I've been putting off for a long time and I'm going to do them at the same time. I've got some loose chains in here, worn chains uh, for the drive mechanism and I need to address those before they chew up my sprockets. And at the same time I've got uh, an axle here on this side in the back, an axle seal that's leaking. And I want to take care of that because I have to get into the chain case to do both of those. So I'm going to do it at the same time. So I'll begin by pulling the seat off and then this front cover. And that'll get me access to the chain case where I can pull those covers. Let's get going. recreate a little bit of this because I jumped ahead before I started videoing this. First thing that you have to do is remove the chain case covers and there's two of them. Now the instructions in my manual say nothing more than remove these two covers. Um, they don't tell you how to do that. So the first cover in front has the foot pedal. This operates the brake and it's got a rod that runs back to this lever which in turn causes those brakes to lock and unlock. So that, that's how it begins. So let's get that first cover out of the way. That's not a big deal. There. It's that simple. Okay, so we get the first one off. Now that second cover was a lot more involved because this rod has a bolt in it. You can see that. And you have to take this off. Now in order to get this off, it's got to go up. There's not enough clearance here to get that up. So here's what I did to do that. Okay. This control rod that runs through the center, and both of the sticks are attached to it, is attached to the body with just a couple of bolts. So I just pulled a couple of the bolts off on this one side, and when I did that, now this thing can go up and down. There we go. So you can see how you can raise that up and down. So I was able to raise that up high enough let me get this out of the way so that I could lift up this cover and get that whole brake block that's attached right here. I had enough clearance to get that brake block out. Now this cover's off and we have access to everything we need to get access to. So let's outline the chain issue that we've got here. These chains rattle. I'm not sure. It seems like it rattles more on this side when I'm running it, and it rattles when, only when I'm going downhill. So kind of when, uh, maybe when the tension is taken off of that chain is when I hear it rattle around in there, and I really want to take care of that. This side doesn't seem quite as bad, and there are four chains in here. so. This side, I think, is a little quieter. You can see we've got a fair amount of play in that. But this chain, let's see if we can do this. There's a lot of play in that chain. And I think that's where my noise was coming from. Now the sprockets look good in this. So while it's open, I'm going to do all four chains. Now I could go online and order up chains um, through Bobcat and they're $160 each and there are four of these here so you can do the math on what that would cost. The other option is to just buy bulk chain and then just get some connecting links um, and do that. And I can do that by buying um, two 10 foot lengths of 60H chain and then some links 
Um, that all together will cost me maybe between the chain and the extra links just under $80. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. And then what I'll have to do here is just pull these chains off and measure to make sure the ones I make are correct. All right, gang, I jumped ahead of you here, uh, mainly because I didn't really know how I was going to approach this thing, and having a camera involved just complicated things all the more. So I've got that rear axle out. I want to show you what I ended up doing with that, and I'll show you on the other side here a little bit of a reenactment just so you know what, what I was doing. So... What we've got down inside of here is that nut on the axle and it was tough getting a wrench in there and just getting leverage so what I ended up doing is just locking my wrench in and then I got a piece of steel bar and bridged it across this chain case so that that wrench couldn't move and ended up using the power of the Bobcat so I started it up and I just grabbed this lever and pulled it forward gently to rotate that axle and as I rotated the axle the wrench held the nut in place and it backed the nut off and that actually worked really well I mean it was I was not above an idle with the engine and it just backed out as clean as could be so let me show you the axle. So I borrowed this um, axle puller from the O'Reilly's nearby and it doesn't cost me anything. I just need to use it and return it and I'll get all my money back. Um, but I had one problem in that this plate that they gave me was just a little bit too small to reach across these studs. So I improvised a little by using some scrap metal I had laying around and I just made a plate that would fit over four of the studs and then drilled some holes and took some old hardware I had laying around so I could get this puller onto that axle and I was able to yank that axle out using this slide hammer. So that worked pretty well. Okay, the next thing I needed to do was get the seal off that was mounted right here. And it was basically, we had a, um, let me show you this, had a bearing right there. Hold on, I'm going to show you this. So there was a bearing there and then a seal on the very outside. So in order to get that seal off, I had to get the bearing off. This happens to be the inner bearing, but it's the same as the outer. And that bearing was kind of rumbly anyway, so I needed to take that off. Um, I didn't have a tool for that, so I ended up just taking a Dremel. And, you know, I, I pried off just the outer cage of the bearing, and then I took a Dremel and just cut four slots into it, and then used a chisel to crack it free, and I was able to loosen it up and get it off of there. I know there's better tools for that, but I'm working with what I've got on hand. Now the other problem that I could see right away once I got that seal off, I'm going to try to zoom in as close as I can. If you look right in here is where that seal rides and it's pretty rough. This is, this is not in great shape and I think it's probably just going to leak again if I do that. So what I'll do is put a speedy sleeve on here. So I've measured this up and ordered up a sleeve and I'll get a speedy sleeve on there before I put the seal and the bearing back so that um, that will seal properly. And then this will be ready to go back in. So that's it. Axle's out. I'm going to leave this sit now while I wait for parts and I'll move on and start looking at those chains. Alright, I have my speedy sleeve. That speedy sleeve is going to give me a real nice surface right there. So, they're pretty simple to install. 
this sleeve goes over here and then it gets driven down onto onto this shoulder and they give you a little cup to do that but we got a little problem that cup won't fit over this long shaft so initially I thought what I would do is just use a piece of PVC I've got that so I can run this over here and drive that in but I'm afraid these edges might collapse before this thing is all the way home so I think what I'm going to do is I've got a nice tight fit I'm going to fit this up into here and in order to have clearance what I'll do is take a hole saw and just take the center out of this and I'll leave a little bit of a shoulder to grab in here so let's see how that works all right I think we're ready to go I got that one opened up and then I drove it down in here so we're gonna have a nice fit there and that fits all the way down so the next thing I want to do and they don't really call for this but I like to do this anyway is I'm gonna put a little bit of this Permatex gasket shellac compound on there and it just sort of peace of mind kind of glues it in place just in case it decides it wants to move around I'll just put a real thin coat on here there we go get this on here we go. Hopefully this will be on there nice and straight. Let's see how it goes. All right, it's working its way on. Just about there. One more little tap. Okay, that's where I want it. So now we got a nice clean surface here. Now we just have to peel this little flange off. So we got the speedy sleeve in place. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put the seal on and then we'll get the bearing on there. So we get the seal down here. It's out of the way. Now the bearing is going to go on and we got to press this on. So we got to get it past this shoulder and then down onto this. So I used the old bearing, um, at least the center of the old bearing that I took out um, to press this one in and we'll use the screw press on this and see how well this works. going in should be no big deal almost all the way here okay that's it that should do it bearing is pressed back on we have the seal on this axle is ready to go back in so now I've got the seal and the bearing on the axle and according to the instructions the next thing I need to do here is to drive that axle back into the housing and when I do that the seal will be driven into the housing so for this what they're telling me is I need this installation tool and it basically is this piece here that comes in two halves and it's got a little spring and what this does is it seats against the outside edge of that seal so you don't damage the seal when you're driving it back in so 
I don't have that tool. Let me show you what I did. I took an old PVC coupler, cut it thin, sliced it in half, and instead of a spring, I'll use a hose clamp. And this will go in behind that seal, between the seal and this axle. And so when I drive it in, this should drive that seal in. And then I can just take the clamp off, and it's good to go. Here we go. I've already cleaned all this up. I'm going to slide this back in. Now these are not greased axles. These are actually lubricated by oil that's up inside the chain case. Um, but I'm going to dribble a little gear oil on this just to sort of pre-oil it. And then let's see what happens here. Okay. Okay, I think that I think the seal's all the way home now. So let's take that install tool off. Let's see how we did. The axle's back in. We're going to start on the chains. I've already counted out the number of links that I need. And depending upon how you count, um, I just kept it easy and I just counted um, each of these outer uh, connectors and I've got 34. I counted that off of the old chain that I removed. So I know these are the same length and I'm not sure how people typically count these things, but that's how I'm doing it. And so I've already, already got one here. Um, what I did though is I counted out to the last one I need to retain and then I marked the one I need to remove. And now I'll just use this chain breaker to bust that free. All right, that's it. Just a couple more. All right, I've already got one chain on. I started with that chain on the axle that I replaced the seal for. Now we've got three more to do. Now this stage of the job, there's a couple of ways you could go. Uh, you could drain all the oil out of this um, chain case and it'd be a little less messy, uh, but then you got to collect the oil and get it back in there. So I'm going to take a different route. I'm just going to leave the oil in there. I'll snake the chain up and over um, each of these um, sprockets on the axles uh, because those will spin freely. I've got this thing up on blocks right now. The center small sprockets are on the drive motors and those aren't going to turn. So that's why I'm going to start by bringing it up and around those other larger sprockets. But I will tell you, this is a messy job. Just plan on getting a lot of oil on your hands. You'll be up to your wrist in it. Uh, but I'll do them all at once before I start snapping them together so that I don't have to go back in that oil a second time. Okay, all the chains are on. I didn't film this because it's just tight quarters and it would have been real difficult, but basically what I did was use this pincher. 
that basically pulls those two halves of the chain together so I could get that link in. So I went around and did that on all of these. And I'm going to show you this real quick. If you remember at the very beginning of the video, I showed you how loose these chains were. Now they're really snug. So this was definitely an overdue repair, and I'm glad I took the time to do it. All right, I got everything back together. The repair is done. The only thing left to do is take it outside, take it through its paces. We're just going to run this thing around a little bit, make sure that the chains are working right, make sure that we're not leaking anything. And let's just move a little bit of snow, and then we'll take another quick look and see how things turned out. Everything's working and it's working really well. No funny noises from the chains, just like it's supposed to work. I don't see any leaks. So I think we're done with this one. Thanks for watching and get out there and fix your own stuff. It's not that hard.